Praise the Lord. Our pastor said, Your oh, hallelujah is too cold. I say the same thing. I said, Praise the Lord. All our newcomers, I was so glad when I saw you coming out. And I pray that this day will be a great day for you of worshiping the Lord in the Palai Bible Church in Jesus' name. Amen. All over the world, online, in every continent, every country, every congregation, every church location, my heart is with you. And I praise the Lord that we're here together. And of course, our Alpha location. We call it Abbe Okuta. Put those hands together. Amen. I thank the Lord for dominion. Fresh dominion. Full dominion. And complete dominion. And I pray, as a result of the impact of this crusade and this service this morning, I pray that this dominion will be perfect, permanent, perpetual in every life in Jesus' name. As we come to the service today, we we'll still continue the theme, the subject, and the topic of dominion before i tell you what it is let's pray together father we thank you at this time and we bless your name because we know you are worthy to be worshipped and we come to worship you today we pray everything we need of the dominion from heaven you pass on to everyone inscribe it in every heart every life in jesus name and we pray lord our lives will take on a new power a new strength and a new dominion every day of our lives in jesus name we well, thank you lord because we know you have answered in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. I will not release you to see that if you don't give me a good amen. amen. I love that God bless you. You can sit down now. Today we come to the subject of walking like the master in full dominion. Walking like the master in full dominion walking ways the master will walk like the master when we're able to walk with him walking for the master we walk like him when, we're, when we know we're doing it for him i'm not just talking leisure work i have a goal i have a destination and i have a purpose that i am walking making progress for the lord we walk with him when we walk by him by his strength by his grace by his power and the only way we can walk with the savior the only way we can walk like the master the only way we can walk and make progress and get to the place he wants to, us to get to is that we walk by his power we walk in his power when he gives that power and we say we come into christ and christ comes into us because he lives in us because of that we can walk like him now when a child is born the first thing that that child sees is that daddy and mommy and the brothers and the sisters and the siblings they are walking he is not able to walk the desire of his heart that little child is that one day he'll not just be crawling he'll not just be standing he will walk and then when he walks like the father when he walks like daddy that brings the joy and when somebody comments 
This is uh, Mr. So-and-so's son. He walks exactly like the father. It brings joy to the father. It brings joy to the son. And when we have the Savior, we have the Redeemer, we have the Master, the Messiah, and then we walk like him. And the angels are able to comment that he or she, a believer, a disciple, a child of God, a servant of God. He walks like the master. He brings joy to heaven and he brings joy in our heart and he brings joy around us. Now when we're talking about walking like the master in full dominion, you are not the first person to walk like the master and you cannot be imagining can I do it? Yes. Others before us. D for Daniel. Daniel walked like the master. In Babylon, he lived a life. He sustained a life. He maintained a life that made him not to be a compromiser. Daniel obeyed Adam for all. The ark of the Lord had been rejected by this and that but he said i want the representation of the lord to be in my home that man walked with the lord and for moses look at moses everything god told him to do he did everything according to the word of the lord we can do it moses walked like the master or the master isaac we just learned about isaac today and Isaac listening to the father Abraham and like Abraham said the God with whom I walk and he sustained me he will send this angel before you Isaac listening to that and the joy in Abraham's heart is that Isaac walked with the master and in fact God said I know he will command his children they will walk and they will obey my voice and so I seek watch what the Lord Noah that preacher of righteousness he walked for the Lord he found grace in the sight of the Lord the nation the community the place where he lived was corrupt but then that man found grace in the sight of the lord i say i say i am the children whom god has given me were for signs and for wonders in the land he walked with the lord or badiah he walked with the lord and he had the possession the possession of holiness and the possession that the Lord had given from heaven. He walked with the Lord. Nehemiah. Nehemiah walked with the Lord. He was in the palace. But eventually he heard a work to be done. And then he responded to that. And Nehemiah came up and he said, Lord, by your help, by your grace, this is what I will do now. If all those people that spell dominion and they live the life of a person having dominion, it comes to your turn. It comes to my turn. We can walk with the Lord and we walk with the Lord in His grace, in His strength, in His power. And that power is coming more abundantly in your life today in Jesus' name. The topic walking like the master in full dominion. We're looking at first John chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 6. It says, This to us he that saith he abideth in him. He's going to save born again. Now he abides in him saved. Now he abides justified. The sins are forgiven. He is set free. And he says now I'm in Christ. I abide in him. I am for Christ. I abide in him. I live in Christ. And he lives in me. I abide in him. He that saves. He abideth in him. Arch himself also so to walk even as he Christ the Savior 
even as he Christ the Messiah even as he Christ the master even as he was that's a calling that's a commitment that's a consecration that he lived in dominion Christ he maintained dominion Christ every step of the way he had dominion and he's calling upon you that you are saved you are born again you are a child of God and you are in him and you live and you walk in that dominion he that says he that testifies he that professes he that confesses he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked there are three things we're looking at number one number one we have the decisive walk of faith in the world in the world in which we live in the community in which we live there is the decisive faith in the world that we walk by number two the deliberate walk of true followers in his word he's giving us his word he's giving us the map he's giving us the road he's giving us the map and he says you walk according to my word and they will have the deliberate walk of true followers in his word number three the determined work now somebody cannot walk except he determines i'm going to rise up i'm going to walk i'm going to get to that place you need that decision and you need that determination the determined walk of the faithful in his way let's come to number one number one the decisive walk of faith in the world in first corinthians second corinthians chapter 5 reading from verse 7 for we we'll walk by faith and not by sight we we'll walk by faith and not by sight who are the we walking by faith look at verse 17 in verse 17 it says therefore if any man be in christ those are the we those are the people they are in christ because of salvation they are in christ because of conversion they are in christ because of the new nature the lord has put within them and he says therefore if any man be in christ he is a new creature old things have passed away behold all things have become new he tells us in chapter 4 of that same second corinthians verse 13 it says we those are the people that walk by faith we have been the same spirit of faith according as it is written i believed and therefore have i spoken we also believe and therefore speak it tells us in verse 18 while we look not at the things which are seen the things that happen around us the noise that happens around you the sight that happens around you the situation happening around you it says we don't look at that we're looking at the master we're looking at the savior we're looking at the redeemer we're looking at the one that is going before us we're watching his steps and because we are watching his steps we take our steps after him we look not at the things that are seen but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporal those things will pass away the things that jolt us the things that disturb us the things that distract us the things that point another way to us the temporal things it says we don't look at them but the things which are not seen are eternal that's how we're able to walk by faith and it's that same faith that saved us the same faith that brought us into the kingdom keeping us in the kingdom the decisive walk of faith in the world three things number one decisively walking by the faith of a forerunner number two diligently walking 
in the face of our fathers number three daily walking avoiding the footsteps of the faithless number one decisively walking by the faith of our forerunner christ is a forerunner he did it only die for us he lived to give us a good example a perfect example as to how to live how to walk how to move how to make progress in the kingdom of god the forerunner look at hebrews chapter 6 and i'm reading here from verse 18 it says that by two immutable unchanging unalterable things in the way in which it was impossible for god to lie he might have we might have a strong consolation who are fledged for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us then in verse 19 in verse 19 which hope we have as an anchor of the soul but sure and steadfast and which entereth into that within the veil in verse 20 it tells us it says whither the forerunner for us is entered the forerunner the one that goes before us is the forerunner and he did everything to please the father and now we are following after him and he is made and high priest over forever after the order of Melchizedek that's how we follow after him how do we do that we do it by faith by the same faith that he had and was able to stand able to overcome every trial every temptation and at every crossroad he said this is the way the father has ordained and he walked in the way that the father has ordained and we walk by that same faith galatians chapter 2 reading from verse 20 galatians chapter 2 verse 20 it tells us i am crucified with christ unless ego is crucified you cannot walk like christ if you're full of self if you're full of pride if you're full of yourself and full of ego there's no way you can walk like him he submitted himself he surrendered himself he gave himself and it is when i surrender all i surrender all all to thee my blessed savior i surrender all it is when ego ego e-g-o edging god out that's ego when you edge god out god don't talk to me now i know what i'm going to do god don't lead me edging god out that's your ego edging god out when you say god don't instruct me i know what i'm going to do what i did last year what i did last month what i did last week what i did yesterday i'm going to do the same thing i don't need any fresh revelation from you ego edging god out it is when that ego is cancelled that pride is cancelled that adamic nature is crucified that then we can walk by faith with the lord i am crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but christ no more pride but christ no more ego but christ no more adamic nature but christ liveth in me and the life which i now live in the flesh i live by the faith of the son of god who loved me and gave himself for me look at number two here number two didn't you walk in in the faith of our fathers diligently walking in the faith of our fathers you see people that read history and they don't know what they read in history they have read the history of abraham of enoch of abel of noah of sarah of isaac of joseph 
the bread the history of Moses and then what shall I most say time will fail me to talk about each of them their fathers in the faith and that's why is this faith of our fathers living still faith of our fathers set before us that we see how others walk independent of the world in which they live independent of the ideas prevalent in their world that they lived by faith as our fathers to show us example and now if we are going to walk progressively and successfully we're going to walk in the faith and faithfulness of our fathers look at Romans chapter 4 we're looking at verse 12 Romans chapter 4 I'm reading from verse 12 it says and the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham who also walk in the steps of the faith of Abraham which he had been yet uncircumcised look at verse 16 in verse 16 it tells us it says therefore it is of faith salvation of faith sanctification of faith an appropriate work of the Lord it is of faith that means we don't drop our faith in the church on Sunday as we're going back home we take that faith with us in the office by faith at home walk by faith in your community walk by faith your walk in reference to the word he has given us and it is that word that generates faith and it is that word by which we live we live an upright life a righteous life a christ-like life by faith and then he tells us he says therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure to all the siege not to that only which is of the law but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham who is the father of all so look at verse 17 it says in verse 17 as it is written I have made thee a father of many nations a promise given and that promise became the path and the precept by which he walked he was always walking in, in reference to that word that the heavenly father had given him and he said before him whom he believed even God who quickness the dead and called those things which be not as though they were and then in verse 18 he tells us who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be look at verse 20 there in verse 20 he tells us that he staggered not at the promise of god through unbelief he staggered not at the promise of god among those some believers if you're going to walk like the master do some believers were threatening and do some believers will try to do something that may jolt you intimidate you but then because you are not looking at them you're looking at the master you you see you staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief but was strong in faith giving glory to God and then in verse 21 it says I'm being fully persuaded a person is going to walk by faith 
he must be fully persuaded that the word of God is greater and higher, more important than the words of man. A person is going to walk by faith, he must be fully persuaded that the ideas of the world, they are nothing. And the projects of the world, in comparison to the project of God for his life, they are nothing. A person is going to be fully persuaded and walk by faith, he must understand that all the comments and the opinions of people all over the world, they mean nothing in comparison with the word that the Lord had given him. And if you are going to be fully persuaded and you say, I'm going to walk by faith, whatever comes and whatever goes, whatever happens, whatever does not happen, whatever I feel, whatever I don't feel, if you're going to walk by faith, you'll be fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. You will walk by faith. I said you will walk by faith. Look at Hebrews chapter 11 verse 27. Hebrews chapter 11. We're looking at verse 27. By faith, by faith, by faith, he forsook Egypt. Now, you cannot leave the known for the unknown if you don't have faith. This is all you see. The financiers, the helpers, the supporters. If they are not there, you think you are done. You are gone. No future. If you don't have faith in the invisible one, in the almighty, you will be depending on flesh, on the people of the world. You will not be able to forsake anything. You see, if I give up this, that sinful partner, if I give up this, that person uh, that is the bully in my life, and then uh, he might crush me and have something that is more from where that came from. He threw something at me, and if I don't fear him and cringe and be subjected to him, uh, there is more from where that came from. If you're like that, you can't forsake anything. But you know, if you're going to walk by faith, faith in the Lord, faith in the Almighty God, faith in the Eternal One, you must be able to know this one in comparison with God. This one is nothing. In comparison with the Almighty, this temporal thing, this earthly thing is nothing. That is what helps you. That is what aids you. That is what supports you. That is what energizes you. That is what empowers you to walk by faith. He, by faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king not fearing the wrath of the king there are people in this life they live their lives on the basis of fear and the enemy has tied a rope in their leg the rope of fear if they want to move and progress take that decision and move the right direction the enemy pulls that rope and say we're still here the fear is still here. The timidity is still here. The terror is still here. Be careful what you do. Be careful what you look at. Be careful the direction you go. And then the fellow will <laughs> quiet him down. I cannot. You'll never get to any peak. You'll never get to any summit. You'll never get to the place the Lord has ordained for you. When you fear Pharaoh, you fear Nebuchadnezzar, you fear Herod, you fear their magicians, you fear all the people that are supporting Pharaoh but who are told by faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Seeing him who is invisible. That's the way to live in our lives. When you're sick, you see him who is invisible. When you are terrified, and when you are intimidated, you look beyond that object of intimidation. You look at him 
who is invisible and when things turn around and when it appears everything is upside down those are things in the world those are temporal things you look at him who is invisible you'll hear his voice you'll feel his power and you will understand the Lord will be with you every day of your life in Jesus name I was waiting for a good sunny Sunday amen he will be with you he will not leave you and when you look at him who is invisible you'll be stronger and stronger in every challenge that comes in your life in Jesus name number three now is the daily daily walking avoiding the footsteps of the faithless avoiding the footsteps of the faithless now if we were to divide your world into two if we were to divide our world into two and we say those who walk by faith then those who are faithless the vast majority of the world of your world the people who are faithless they will say it they say you know I'm a doubting Thomas. They take pride in it. They say, seeing is believing. If I don't see it like Thomas, if I don't feel it like Thomas, if I don't put my finger into that wound, if I don't thrust my hand to his side, I will not believe. I hear God is doing this, God is doing that, but you know, I don't accept until it happens to me. The faithless, they the majority in our world. And if you're going to walk by faith, you must avoid the footsteps of the faithless. We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 32 and I read from verse 20 chapter 32 reading from verse 20 and it says I will hide my face from them I will see what their end shall be why almighty God a creator a redeemer the lover of every soul why will you hide your face from some people and you want to see what their end will be it says because for they are a very forward generation children in whom there is no faith think about that whatever you have money if you don't have faith you don't please God education if you don't have faith you don't please God authority and position if you don't have faith you don't please God even if you have drunk water out of the rock before if you don't have faith you don't please God it's said like children in whom there is no faith think about your language is there faith in your language think about your action is there faith in your action think about your lifestyle is there faith in your lifestyle think about your proposals and all your dream and all your goal and the things you want to achieve is there faith there children in whom there is no faith you want to avoid all the footsteps of the people who are faithless and i pray you'll be a man of faith you'll be a woman of faith well, the same. I was thinking that the I was thinking that the amen of the women will be higher and stronger, more sonorous than the amen of the men, but looks like we're on the same level. Faith. We'll walk by faith in Jesus' name. And when we'll walk by faith, and we're diligent about that, and we do that daily great things will happen in your life you know a man walking by faith it can remove any mountain a man walking by faith it can stop the sun right there a man walking by faith it can tell the moon stay where you are a man walking by faith it can walk through the red sea while the Egyptians come in are drowned a man walking by faith 
can have the wonders of God in his life, in her life, every day of his life. I will walk by faith. You will. I said you will. And it will be good in your life. We we'll come to point number two now. Point number two. We're looking at the deliberate walk of true followers in the world. You know, anything we do that gets results must be deliberate. Even look at writing. We're writing, writing. And then somebody comes to ask you, say, what are you writing? Nothing in particular. I'm just writing. It's not deliberate. It doesn't write anything of value. It's walking. It's going somewhere. Where are you going? Really, I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I'm just, I'm just walking. No destination. And there's no deliberate effort that this is where I am going. And this is what I'm going to achieve. If you're going to walk successfully, progressively, it must be a deliberate walk. And it's according to the word of the Lord. Three things we're looking at. We're looking at number one, consistently walking with the Lord of the word. The Lord of the word. If there's anything God loves, he loves the word. And he exalts the word above his name. And you are consistently walking in with the Lord of the word. Number two, courageously walking in and the light of his word courageously walking let me serve you notice if you are a fearful person a timid person a person that is always looking at the faces of people when they frown your joy is gone when they open their mouth and they show angry faces all the ideal and the ideas you had inside you everything evaporates if you are not courageous if you don't say this is my life I was born alone into the world. And when I go, I will go alone. And when I face the Almighty on that final day, I'll face him all alone by myself. All the people that intimidate you, they will not come and say, God, don't blame him. Because we made him fearful. We made him intimidated that he could not do what you told him to do. They will not be there. You will stand alone before the Lord. That's the reason why. Since they are not going to be there that day, they should not be there today. And courageously you are walking in the light of his word. Number three is conscientiously walking in, the, in line with his word. Look at number one there. Consistently walking. Number one, consistently walking in the ways the Lord of the world. Look at Amos chapter 3 verse 3. Amos chapter 3 verse 3. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Except they be agreed. The Almighty God says, this is the way. Walk here therein. Can two walk together except they be agreed? The Almighty says, except you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Can two walk together except they be agreed? The Almighty God says, follow peace and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And two cannot walk together except they be agreed. If you see the word of God, you hear the word of God and you disagree agree in your heart any judge any teacher any part of the word of god you cannot walk with god because the two god and man the highest and the lowest on earth here if you're going to walk with god you must agree with god that says this is the way and you'll walk there look at psalm 138 i'm looking at verse 2 psalm 138 we're looking at verse 2 it says i will worship towards thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth look at this the latter part 
Look at that, the last line. Look at what God is saying here. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Sometimes you hear people pray. And when you hear people pray, they mention the name of God. They adore God. They mention his name, his title, his attributes, everything about God here and there until your head was swell. If you are listening to them, but they do not follow the way of God. The word of God that brings salvation. They don't know about the salvation of God. They don't know name, title, honor, attributes of God. And they shout that. And they run up and down. They say, God, you are this. And God, you are that. And they do not take heed <coughs> to the word of God. All those people, God does not reckon with them. Because God... As magnified his word above all his name. That's the reason why if you claim to be born again, if you claim to be saved, you are consistently and constantly and wholeheartedly walking of the Lord of the word. It tells us in John chapter 8 reading from verse 31 John chapter 8 verse 31 then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him if ye continue if ye continue if ye continue in my word then are ye my disciples also? I want to remind you that the word of Jesus still stands today. Anything is said about any area of your life, that word still stands today. There are people who think they have outgrown the words of Jesus. They say it's a new dispensation. And in the new dispensation in which we are now, all those words in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the direct words of Jesus, they do not matter to them. They are deceiving themselves. They will be surprised when they get to the other side. They will not make it. Because it says, if ye continue in my words, then are ye my disciples indeed. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Look at verse 32 there. Verse 32, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Good amen there. Yeah. You know, if you are very observant and you are attentive, you will know where to insert your amen. And then the promises of God will be yes and amen in your life in Jesus' name. It says, and ye shall know the truth. Ye shall know the truth. Have you found that people, they say, I'm a Christian. <laughs> but you know, they don't want to know the truth. If there's something, an area of their lives, they're praying, oh God, don't let him mention that area. I don't want to know the truth about that area. Area of my family and my marriage and my character and my behavior. Lord, don't allow the preacher to go that direction. All I came for... I came for prayer. I came for power. They don't want to know the truth. But you know, if you want the blessings of the Lord to overflow in your life, ye shall know the truth. And it is when you're seeking the truth, when you love the truth, when you will not believe a lie. There are people that have strong delusion to believe a lie. But when you love the truth of the word of God, and you say, Lord, is there any area of my life that is hidden from me? I want to hear, tell me in, the, in a plain language, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Yeah. Somebody there will be free today. Yeah. You know, sometimes we're already born again, or even sometimes we're already sanctified. Sometimes we're even already filled with the Holy Ghost, and there is something that is holding us back. 
There's something that is pulling us back. There's something you know, that is delaying total victory and full dominion in our lives. And when you hear intently the word of God, and then you know that truth, and that truth will set you free. My prayer for you today is that anything in your life that is holding you back, even though you profess salvation, sanctification, and all the Christian experiences, whatever is holding you you back from being at the very center of the will and the wonders of God the Lord will make you to know the truth and as you know the truth the Lord himself by his own power the Lord himself by his own grace and the Lord himself today he will make you to be totally free in Jesus name look at number two here number two here is courageously walking in the light of his word courageously walking in the light of his word why do we make many promises in the house of God I will say Lord I've made up my mind now. I've heard the word today. Anywhere I go this week, I'll begin to practice. And we make all the promises, all the consecration, all the commitment. I have heard, I have heard. I cannot say I've not heard. Then you write it down. This point, I must carry it out. But you go back to where you came from. And the enemy knows all the decisions you thought you took. And is waiting for you at the door. <laughs> Welcome. You came. You've got dominion. Welcome. We're here. And I hope you're able to manifest that dominion. They're joking. They're trying to tease you. And then they say, what used to kind of uh, jolt you? And what, kind, kind, what, what disturbed you in the past? And the fear comes, and then timidity comes, and then you cringe, you say, another time, another time. You know, that other time never comes. If you don't take the bull by the horn, that time never comes. It is when you say, I've made up my mind. Let the skies fall. Let anything happen. I am going to be obedient to the watch of the Lord. And courageously, without the fear of man, you walk in the light of his word. That's when the victory will come. And your enemy will back, will back out. Well, see, looks like now a new strength, a new vision, a new power, a new grace has come upon him. Looks like we cannot bottle him, bottle her like we used to do. The Lord give you that power and that grace in Jesus' name. Courageously, like Daniel, Daniel made up his mind that he will not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. Although Babylon was terrible, Nebuchadnezzar was terrible. All the same, he said, this is me. I have only one life to live. And that life, I will live courageously. How many days do we have on earth? And if you live some of those days in fear, in fretting, in cringing, in crawling, and, and you, can't, you have the mind, you can't use your mind. You have the volition, you cannot use the volition. You have the decision-making ability, you cannot use that. They reduce you to a zero man, a zero woman. But when you have the courage and you say, this is the word I have learned, I will walk by that word, nothing will conquer you again. All right, nothing will conquer me again. Amen. amen. I say amen for you. Amen. amen. Heaven says amen for you. Amen. amen. Look at John chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 11. John chapter 8, verse 11. She said, No man, Lord. She was in the presence of the Lord. All the accusers came and they accused her. We caught her. 
we saw her we dragged her we pulled her away from that thing what do you say she shall be stoned she kept quiet there not knowing what the lord will say whatever the lord will say the final whatever pharisees say whatever sadducees says whatever all those that judaizers say they mean nothing whatever christ says that is the final thing and he said no man lord and jesus says unto her neither do i condemn thee he forgave the past he erased the past he blotted out the past so that you will now live in newness of life you will live in newness of life yeah. neither do i condemn thee go and sin no more but not only for her it's for you also look at verse 12 in verse 12 it says then speak jesus again unto them saying i am the light of the world he that followeth me this i will know them he that followeth me this i will know the true followers he that followeth me shall not walk in tell me tell me tell me but you know some of those people in darkness they have great influence great authority and many of them are bullies they want to control your life they want to put your life in their pocket and you're coming in and there are powers of darkness personalities in darkness all their goal of their purpose is in darkness they want you to cringe and they want you to crawl and you say hey come on here and follow that man they thought it's me you are following who are you following i said you are you following yeah. jesus but he said you're following that man kumui no no but you are not following me you are following jesus he will lead you to heaven yeah. It will lead you to glory and you have conviction you know I'm, I'm not there every time i'm not with you all the time if you are following me when i am not looking when i'm not able to see you you will dodge and you go and do something but, but jesus christ is always there and you are following him if you're a true follower he that follows me shall not walk in darkness and no matter the personality of darkness they will not influence you anymore yeah. you will walk courageously yeah. you will walk gallantly and you will walk with real strength valiantly in jesus name yeah. it says but shall have the light of life look at number three here number three we're looking at conscientiously walking in line with this world when you do something conscientiously your mind is there your heart is there your life is there your attention is there you're not looking here and there you're conscientious you are devoted you are focused and you are looking at this and you are saying this is the way i'm going to walk there in conscientiously walking in line with his word look at second corinthians chapter 13 verse 8 for we can do nothing against the truth but for the truth we can do nothing against the truth the truth is like the rock of gibraltar if you try to punch it you hurt yourself you cannot hurt that rock Christ is the rock of ages. It's there eternal. If you try to kick against it, you hurt your leg. You cannot hurt, you cannot hurt the rock of ages. Look at that iron pillar. If you say, I don't like that iron pillar there, based on that foundation, and you knock your head on that pillar, you break your head, that iron pillar will remain. You cannot do something negative against the eternal truth. It's there, it's there. It says, for we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. I pray your life will be for the truth. Your way of life 
your way of living, your action, your behavior, your lifestyle will support the truth in every way in Jesus name. Look at Daniel, this is a man, you remember Daniel, you remember Obed-Edom, you remember Moses, you remember Isaac, you remember Noah, you remember um, Isaiah, you remember Obadiah, you remember ne um, Nehemiah, the spelling dominion, those men of dominion, that the people that make up their minds that they are going to walk according to the truth, that's why they are dominion. It tells us in Daniel, the very first of them, D for Daniel, it tells us, it says, but Daniel purposed in his heart. Daniel purposed in his heart. Every decision you take outside your heart will eventually evaporate. Every decision you take by mouth without your heart, in the head without the heart, by emotion other people they're praying and they're boxing the air and they're crying and they're consecrating and you see them and that moves you to emotion every decision you take with emotion without your heart will not stand sometimes it is the influence of a crowd and every decision you take with the crowd if your heart is not there you're not going to be able to live by that decision but now daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat for no with the wine which he drank. You know, Daniel is said, the man, the king, is a man of honor, but I don't put honor on his wine. He says, the man is a man of great title. I don't put that title on his meat. Daniel, why? Because I know Great men often do foolish things. Because I know that honorable people, honored outside, they sometimes do debasing things. And so, I'm not following their name. I'm not following their honor. I'm following the word of God. And God has highly exalted his word above his name i know what his word says about defilement about corruption others may i cannot and daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat nor with the wine which he drank therefore he requested of the prince of eunuchs that he might not defile himself i will not defile myself <laughs> say that say that <laughs> now there are people that give excuses they give their lives in the hands of other people they say you know pastor i'm not the one that defiled myself she defiled me the power of his life is in the hand of that lady they say pastor i'm not the one that defiled myself he that man if you know the posture of the man the power of the man and the way that man what he will do if you don't listen to him he is the one that defiled me no ultimately you are responsible even Satan cannot defile you. I said Satan cannot defile you. His angels cannot defile you. His men cannot defile you. His prostitutes cannot defile you. It's in your hand. Say it's in my hand. Say it now. They made me fall. Uh -uh, don't say that again. You made yourself fall. They defiled me. Don't say that again. You defiled yourself. They made me backslide. Uh -uh, don't say that again. You backslid yourself. It takes your heart, your decision to say, I will, I will not, and you will not. 
I said you will not. You know to stand. Your destiny is not in the hand of any man. Your decision, your progress is not in the hand of any man because Daniel purposed in his life. His father was not there. His mother was not there. He had been carried away into Babylon. That was not a city. He was in another city. A city of idolatry. A city of corruption. But he said, no matter how much corruption flows on the street of Babylon, I will not defile myself. And Daniel purposed in such that he will not defile himself or the portion of the king's meat. I don't care what the label is, the label is the king's meat, it will not get to Daniel's mouth. You will not, it will not get to your mouth. Yeah. No, the portion of the wine what he drank. You might see it on the billboard. You might see it uh, you know, over television. You might see it at the publicize it. And they say, everybody is taking it. Do you know that great man is taking this brand? Do you know that great woman she is taking that? That doesn't matter to us. We are purposed in our hearts. We will not defile ourselves. And then he asked of the eunuchs and he said that he might not defile himself that's dominion you have dominion I have dominion conscientiously walking in line with his word we come to point number three here point number three the determined walk of the faithful in his way the determined walk of the faithful in his way three things number one personally walking in the narrow way of life number two perilously walking in the broad way of the lost number three purposefully walking in the way of the lord number one personally walking in the narrow way of life. In Matthew chapter 7, reading from verse 13, enter ye in at a straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in there. Verse 14. In verse 14, because straight is the gate. That was straight there means small. It will take you as you want to come into the kingdom, it will not take you and your sin. The gate is straight. It will not take you and your bad character. You have to drop that aside. It will not take you and your evil disposition. You have to drop that because straight is the gate and narrow is the way. Narrow is the way. Narrow is the way that leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. Young people, let me use the key to open your box of understanding. The majority are often wrong. The minority are the people that are walking in the narrow way. There are young people that were born in our church here. <coughs> And now, thank you very much. Now, they have seen uh, what goes on in that fellowship, in that assembly. They've seen what happens in that congregation. They've seen what happens in all these new, new psychedelic uh, fellowships. And uh, liberty, talk about liberty. And talk about license. Talk about doing anything, drinking anything, smoking anything. Uh, 
and there's two good members of that assembly and then the boys and the girls you know messing up together and their pastor their new age pastor modernistic pastor knows about that and he says they're all children they're young people 20 23 they're still children 30 35 they're young people you know if you don't allow them to do whatever they want to do they will not come to church again they come to your church but they don't get to the kingdom of god broadway way of liberty and way of licentiousness and way of immorality and they say that's my church if that's your church if it's the church on the broadway you will get to destruction final eternal destruction but the narrow way that leads to life that you are born again and your life is a new life if any man if any boy any girl any woman be in christ he or she is a new creature all things are passed away and behold all things have become new that is the narrow way that leads to life you will find it i said you'll find that way and then with the grace of god in the strength of the lord you are walking in that narrow way that leads to life everlasting sometimes we parents yes we pray we do more than praying we parents we have to be firm now you cannot force the child but at least you can declare your stand you can stay back you can say my boy you know you're a dagger in my heart you're walking in the broadway no daddy you don't understand in the church i go the fellowship i go they preach this they, I, I don't care what they preach i see your lifestyle i see what you're doing you are not in the narrow path that leads to heaven and you're a dagger in my heart if you say dagger in your heart you'll not be smiling at the foolish things she's doing or she's doing you'll not be supporting i don't want to lose my child therefore i will do it this way you've lost him already you've lost her already to the broad way but when you take your stand and you say boy you know where i stand like my own children i'm talking to you personally they know where i stand and they know wherever they go whatever they do whatever report i have i hear i say they're of age that one is 40 that one is about 38 and i say they know what they're doing and i don't worry myself a bit and i don't try to do anything to draw them and hook them and compromise if i'm nearer the grave i'm nearer the coming of the lord and day and so if i compromise now and then i die in compromise those children may come back eventually and said we killed our father by our action and now he's gone and then if i go to the wrong place and then they repent after that and then they go to heaven what have i gained i'm going to stand i said i'm going to stand any boy any girl may do anything and go anywhere you stand in your life in jesus name another amen, amen. the narrow path that leads to life eternal look at number two there number two there perilously walking in the broad way of the lost look at that verse 13 again in matthew chapter 7 verse 13 it says enter ye in at the straight gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction that leadeth to destruction there are some times some of our people they're not really totally inside when we have bible study monday they come thursday they come sunday 
they come after they leave our service they run to another place they say that's where i enjoy worship i enjoy the dancing i enjoy all the things that take place in that place they come to us and they claim they are our members and then they go that other place the problem is when they come back they say why is the situation like this why can't they change and modify and be like that other place they want to now not only control one or two people they want to control the whole church that the whole church will be like the broadway fellowship they have been going to and they put the pressure on us they do it this one they do it that way so that we will turn the deeper life to shallow life superficial life so that all the things they have seen over there they bring everything here and then there's no hope for the christian faith because everybody has gone the direction of the broadway i will not join them <laughs> whatever happens whatever the pressure whatever the trial whatever the temptation and whatever the complaint and whatever anybody says i've gone too far to go back again i'm on my way to heaven anybody there i said i'm on my way to heaven and it is this narrow path that leads to life eternal and nobody will twist my hand shut my mouth close my eyes pinch my heart and then draw me and drag me to the broad way even my dead body will not be in that broad way your life that you come to the lord that you say this is the way i will walk therein the grace of god will help you and the power of the lord will sustain you in jesus name look at number three there number three there is purposefully walking in the way of the lord purposefully purposefully walking in the way of the lord i say chapter 35 i say chapter 35 i'm reading from verse 8 and an highway shall be there and a way it shall be called the way of holiness that's the way of the lord it shall be called the way of holiness the unclean shall not pass over it but it shall be for those the wayfaring men do fools shall not err therein you will not err in the way of god you have put your feet on a path on a way on the road that leads to eternal life you will not turn back no never 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 you will not turn back in jesus name the lord will help you the lord will sustain you his grace will be abundant in your life and the life of christ that he lived to please the almighty god that same life will be reproduced in your life in jesus name and not only you you will influence many other people and they will not influence you and take you back to the broad way you will influence many other people and you'll walk together in this narrow path that leads to heaven yeah. you are your wife yeah. you are your husband yeah. you are your children yeah. you are your parents yeah. you are your co-workers yeah. you are your friends and you and everyone around you you will walk it will not be a past tense i used to walk i used to believe i used to stand i used to stay in the way of the lord but at the present hour every day of your life you will continue in that way of the lord in jesus name personally and purposefully and perseveringly every step of the way in your life you will walk in the way of the lord in jesus name i look at this and it says the unclean shall not pass over it once you're unclean 
once you are defiled once you are sinful you're no more in the narrow path that leads to heaven the unclean shall not pass over it and then it says the lion shall not be there the violent shall not be there the pugnacious shall not be there the people that love strive and they love violence and they love um, a thing that will not bring peace only commotion they will not be in the narrow path that leads them look at verse 9 here in verse 9 it says no lion shall be there that nature of a lion that nature of strife and that nature of evil that nature of the beast I will not have the nature of Christ and the nature of the Redeemer. That nature of the lion must be taken out, must be uprooted before you can walk in that path that leads to heaven. And it says, No, any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. Ravenous beasts, the people that destroy and the people that disorganize and the people that spoil the way of the Lord it says they shall not be there they shall not be found there but the redeemed of the Lord shall walk there are you there I said are you there the redeemed of the Lord shall walk there look at verse 10 in verse 10 and the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their head and they shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away yeah. somebody shout amen, amen. Genesis chapter 18 I'm reading from verse 19 Genesis chapter 18 we're looking at verse 19 it says for I know him God talking about Abraham the man of faith and the man that lived by faith and the man that conscientiously walked by faith he said I know him that he will command his children and his household after him and they shall keep the way of the lord the lord should be able to testify concerning you concerning me concerning us he will teach his children he will teach his members he will teach the church that they shall keep the way of the lord to do justice and judgment that the lord may bring upon abraham that which he has spoken of him Malachi chapter 2 I'm reading from verse 6 Malachi chapter 2 we're looking at verse 6 it says the law of truth was in his mouth it wants the truth to be in our mouth in our heart and out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh he wants the truth truth in its entirety truth without modification and truth without alteration and truth without any mutilation it says the law of truth was in his mouth iniquity was not found in his leaves he walked with me in peace and equity and did turn look at this and did turn away many from iniquity that's the life he wants for us that's the life he delights in that's the word that that's the life is going to reward that should live an upright life a righteous life a holy life an impeccable life a life uncompromising life and then you influence others you teach others you prevail on others that they too will walk in that way of righteousness all the days of our lives is that possible i said is that possible it will be done revelation chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 4 revelation chapter 3 verse 4 here is the word of jesus thou hast a few names even in sadis which have not defiled 
their garments. They shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. When you walk with the Lord in the present life, in the present generation, in the present dispensation, when you walk with the Lord in His word, in his way when you walk with the lord uprightly righteously and you walk conscientiously consistently and you walk daily at every opportunity you are walking in with the lord then eventually you'll walk with him in white because you are worthy look at verse five in verse five he that overcometh he that overcometh the people who succumb they'll not make it the people who are conquered they'll not make it the people who are subjected to evil and they compromise they'll not make it but the people that overcome any overcomer there today <laughs> you overcome in jesus name you'll overcome the flesh you'll overcome the foe and you'll overcome all the things the filthiness of the world in jesus name and it is that overcoming life the life of faith the life of faithfulness the life of righteousness the life of holiness every day in our lives that is the life that will make it on the final day it says he that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment and i will not blot out his name out of the book of life when you overcome you are not overcome by temptation you are not crushed by temptation you are not subdued by temptation and every time you have triumph and you live triumphantly and victoriously he says he will not blot out your name out of the book of life but i will confess his name before my father and before his angels i will be there when the trumpet sounds and the dead in Christ are raised up and then we which are alive were raised up and caught up together to be with the Lord in the air and forever and forever we will be with the Lord I pray you'll be there on that final day in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you i will come again and take you unto myself so that where i am there ye will be also i will be there if ye then be risen with christ seek those things which are above where christ is seated on the right hand of majesty on high set your heart set your mind set your goal set your focus and set your gaze on things above and not on things on the earth for ye are dead and your life is seed with christ in god and when he shall appear then shall we also appear with him and his glory he will give unto us in jesus name it takes a life of decision a life of dedication a life of complete surrender and commitment unto the lord and it is not that you do it now and then when temptation trial pressure comes tomorrow during the week then you go back but you are consistent you are conscientious and you are constant and you are following after the lord courageously and on that final day when the role is called up yonder I will be there I will be there I will be there why don't you rise up and tell the Lord he's called us to walk in his way he's called us to walk in his word he's called us to walk in everything he has revealed unto us it takes salvation that's how to enter it takes salvation that has to enter and in sanctification you are walking walking by him and the power of the Holy Ghost in your life that's what it takes call upon the Lord and say Lord whatever I need whatever it will take I want to have so that I will have dominion every day in my life. I have dominion over everything that may come my way.